Hey, I'm RC, and this is the episode 21 about creating a multiplayer game in Node.js. In this video, we'll be covering how to debug the game server. So right now, with the current code, if there's an error on the game server, the game server will simply crash, and it's kind of hard to debug. So for example, right now in the game, there is a bug that if you type a message, the server will crash. And the only information we have is if we check the terminal, we will have the um, error message. Um, the error message is useful, but it would be even more useful if we could debug exactly what happened on the game server. So the first thing I'm going to do is to show you how to debug the application using Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code is a free text editor uh, that I personally um, recommend you to use if you make web application like a Node.js server. At the end of the video, we'll show you a second way to debug the application, which does not require Visual Studio Code. So the first thing you will want to do in Visual Studio Code is to open the project as a folder. So in the file open folder, you will want to choose your uh, project. In my case, it's project draft. And this will make sure that all the settings for debugging the server will be related with um, that folder. Now what you will want to do is to click on the debug icon over here. Now this toolbar on my right side can also be on the left side on some uh, Visual Studio Code. So click on this and then after that you will want to click on this little gear icon in order to create the settings to launch the game server. So by default this is how it should look. You should have a configuration of type node, request launch, then the name you can change it for whatever you want. In my case it's going to be the game server. And then the program is the starting point of the game server. In our case it's the app.js file. So this over here, the workspace folder, will be replaced with the name of the folder um, your current folder in Visual Studio Code. So it's the folder that you selected with the open folder command. Um, now there are two things I would recommend you to add on top of this. Um, this is optional but it will help you a lot. It's the um, smart step parameter and the skip files parameter. So the point of those is to skip um, internal codes um, that is not useful for debugging. Now before actually starting the, the game server, you will want to check this little um, checkbox under breakpoints. So you will want to stop the application whenever there's a non-caught exception. So uncaught exception are the exception that will cause the application to crash. So you'll want to stop right before that happens so we can debug exactly what happened. So now we will want to press the play button over here to start the server. After pressing this, the terminal, um, the debug console should open up. If it does not open up, what you can do is press Control Shift Y and it will display the debug console. This is the equivalent of what was being shown um, when debugging the server directly from the terminal. So this text over here, now instead of being displayed in the terminal, it's displayed in this debug console. Um, now you can go on Google Chrome, refresh the page, and then sign in with your player. Now if you type a message that will make the server crash, it will crash the server, but now you have information over here. So now let's see, the socket list is not defined. So this is kind of weird. So let's see, yeah indeed it's not defined anywhere. Um, what happened is in the app.js file, we define a variable called socket list, but it's not accessible from the entity.js file. So that's why it um, crashes. In order to fix the problem, um, we are going to use the, the list, player list, like this, like this, and like that. So instead of looping through all the sockets, we are going to loop through all the players and for each of the players, we have access to the socket of the player. So this is how you fix the problem. And we will have the same problem over here. So we are going to replace that with this. So now let's try debugging the server again. We will press play, go back here, refresh the page, log in, type a message, and it's gonna crash again. So the socket over here is undefined. Now one thing you can do to know exactly what's going on 
is um, there is a watch under the debug menu over here. There is a watch watch list and you can add new um, expression. So in my case, I want to know exactly a what what is player dot list I and then I can see um, everything about it over here and I can see that there is no socket anywhere. So it's kind of like the socket of the player is never assigned, which is kind of weird. So to debug that, we will actually um, set a breakpoint when a player is created. So a breakpoint is a um, little red dot. You can add one by um, left clicking on the side over here. And um, whenever the game server will reach that point, it's gonna pause the application so you can debug what's going on. So in my case, um, there is a on player on connect. So this is the function that gets called when the player connects. And in theory, there is the socket over here. And it should be set here. We actually set the, the socket, but maybe this is undefined. Maybe there's another bug. So I'm just gonna add a breakpoint here to know exactly what's going on. So we start the server again, and we'll see exactly what's going on. So log in, and now there's um, the application stop. We never actually log the player. We stop over here, and we can see that the socket has values. It, it, it is defined, and the username is B, and the progress of the player, it has one item, potion, amount nine. And then you can use those buttons, so step over, it's exactly the same as uh, when I made a video about how to debug in the browser. Now here we have the player, let's go into it. And yeah, right now we can see that we initialize the player, all the properties, but we don't actually do anything with the socket except initialize the inventory. So this is um, the, bug, the bug, we never actually set the the socket property of the player. So to fix that, I'm going to add this little line of code socket and it should fix the problem. So we start the server again, refresh the page, log in. Now we still have the breakpoint, but now the player has the socket property over here. So it should be working fine. I can remove the breakpoint and I can type messages. And if I log in with another player, and I type a message, the first player sees it. So it's working how it should work. Another small bug we add was in the index.html file. Here we create an inventory and we pass the socket directly, but um, this is not how it should work. If you remember correctly, we changed in a earlier video, the constrictor. So now we need to pass the items, the socket, and then whether or not you're on the server. So we need to do new inventory, empty list of items, socket, and false. So now we'll show you how to debug the game server without Visual Studio Code. So what you will want to do is to open a terminal at the root of your project, and then type nod minus minus inspect, and then app.js. So this will start um, the server in inspect mode, so in debug mode. Now you want to go to your um, to your website, log in, for example. Now if you press F12, this will open the, um, the developer console for the browser. So you have access to all the client variables. So for example, I can inspect the player list and see that this is the player from the client perspective. Now, if you click this little icon over here, it will open the debug console, but from the server perspective. Now, in this console, you can do the same thing that you would in the, um, the client um, debug menu. So you can still spy on variables, for example, player list. And now you have access to the, the player list, but from server perspective. So with the socket and all the, the server functions. And if uh, you can also add breakpoints, so if you click on the source over here, you can click over there. Um, yeah, normally it's not that complicated, but you can see NTT, and I can add on connect right here. 
So whenever a new player will connect, it's gonna, exactly like in Visual Studio Code, it's gonna stop and you'll be able to spy on the variable. So this is the socket, this is the username. Hmm. Username A, progress item potion, and then you can use the the steps over and the step into buttons to debug what's going on. So I guess that will be pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it and see ya.